Hi there, my name is Gregory Adam Scott, and this is my game, Armored Commander, the World War II Tank Commander Roguelike. Pur the purpose of this video is to show off some of the features of the new Beta 2 version of the game, which was uploaded a couple days ago, so let's get started. As you can see, the basic uh, campaign parameters are pretty much the same as previously. You get the same uh, options of campaign select selections, whether you want to have unlimited, um, unlimited availability, model of tank to select from, or you want to start with the stock M4 and have to uh, upgrade later on. You can also choose realistic commander replacement, i.e. permadeath, which means that if your commander dies or is sent home, your campaign is over, or you can have your commander replaced just like any crew member. I'm going to go with strict and realistic for this game. Um, this is where the game starts to diverge from previous versions. So at this point, the first thing that you need to do is input a name for your Sherman tank. If you chose unlimited tank selection, this would also be the time when you choose your actual model of tank. You can pick any model that was available at the start of the campaign, meaning uh, July 1944. So enter the name for your Sherman tank. Enter your name. This represents you, the commander. You can either enter anything you like, or you can uh, have it uh, generate a, a random name as well. So now every time now that you get assigned a new crew member, this window is going to uh, pop up or something similar like this just to let you know what's going on. At this point, you have only added the commander. And from beta 2.0 onwards, the first thing that you can do initially, it gives you the option of assigning skill points. Hey, look at that, New York, New York. If, um, if you want to, you can spend skill points now to add skills to your uh, characters. If not, you can wait. You can spend skill points and upgrade or add skills at any point, even during a battle. It's up to you when you want to use the uh, skill points. But right now, I think I am going to spend the skill points, so I'm going to give them one point of battle leadership, one of fire direction, and one of true grit. True grit is really handy because um, it's less likely that the, um, that the character, that the crewman will be stunned more likely that they'll re recover quicker from that negative status effects and less likely uh, that, uh, that they'll get a severe wound. So it helps them survive. Once you've spent as many or as few skill points as you like, hit escape to continue. Next to be assigned is your gunner and it's gonna go through the other th uh, four crewmen just in the same way. And you have an option at this point to assign skills if you want. The only skill that you can assign at this point is gyro stabilizer. This only becomes available after the first refit mission of the game. After that, you can start to spend skill points um, on this skill. So at the beginning, you have to choose to either move or fire with your Sherman tank. Later on, you can get better at moving and firing. Although even if the skill activates, there's still a plus two penalty. And in the world of Armored Commander, um, just like in Advanced Squad Leader, uh, positive modifiers are bad because positive modifiers affect your dice roll. The whole point of the game is to roll a 2d6 dice roll equal to or less than a target score. So positive modifiers make it harder to beat that score. So let's hand out some skill points. Next is the loader. Driver. I'm going to hand out true grit all over the place because I want my crew to survive. And finally, assistant driver. This is also new. So instead of having a number of calendar days and having an, uh, a random chance of activating on any given day, now there are a fixed number of days, which you can see if you hit it, uh, F11 and go to the cam campaign stats screen, total of 68 action days. And each time you pass one, you'll see how far along in the campaign you are. Um, this, what this allows me to do is to focus the game on the more interesting encounters of the historical campaign of the, of the, of Sherman's, uh, fourth armored division. It also lets me research and, um, add more text background, historical text for each day, rather than having to fill out what must have been oh, nearly 150 actual calendar days. I can focus on a much smaller number. Uh, this screen looks slightly different. We, uh, we still don't have a status indicator to show us where we are on the map. Where we are on the map, that's coming soon. But uh, you might notice that from this screen, we can already see what the mission for the day is going to be, what the expected resistance is, uh, the current weather, and uh, a running total of our victory point score as well. Um, everything else is the same. You have a help menu with different topics. You can see info for your current tank model. You can go back to the crew screen. Look, uh, take a look at your different crew members. If you want to change their name now, you can, you can change that. If you want to give them a nickname or reset a nickname, you can do that as well. Um, you can take a look at your settings. Campaign settings are set at the start of the campaign and cannot be changed once you've started. From here, 
depending on your taste, what kind of a game you want to play, you can turn animations on or off. I like to have them on because otherwise the game just goes a little bit too fast. You can turn sounds on and off. This is also an important setting. Wait for enter before clearing on-screen labels. So a lot of things that happen in ARMCOM, um, information is given in um, labels that pop up on the map screen to tell you about what's going on. If you've played quite a bit of the game and you're used to, you know what to expect, um, these don't really flash by too quickly. When you're first getting started, it's probably better to leave this on because you'll get a chance to review each new bit of information as it comes in and it will wait for you to hit the enter key before uh, continuing. Otherwise, it might c come by pretty fast and it can be difficult to keep track of what's happening in your game. Finally, if you'd like to, you can play full screen. Um, you can also change the resolution for, for full screen, but again, changing these settings can be a little wonky. So best to, to, to find a combination that works for you and stick with it. So we can finally, we can also view our tank. Um, something that was added fairly recently, a couple of versions ago, is a main gun ammunition menu. So this is a dedicated menu for moving shells from supply into general stores, from general stores into your ready rack. And if you hold down the Alt key, you can move it in the opposite direction as well. I've also added sort of a brief, um, a very brief description of what these different symbols mean. Um, what the different short forms for the ammo type mean and uh, what they're used for as well. But once you get used to them, you'll be able to see WP and know immediately uh, what it's for. So uh, from this screen, the, the thing that we do next is we begin the combat day. This will immediately bring us to load uh, main gun ammunition. It will also give us our random amount of the rare ammo type for the day. So HCBI is a rare ammo type. We get one to 10 available to us per day. Luckily we got 10, so let's load that. And let's load up some HE and AP ammo into the general stores. Three. And load some into the ready rack as well. Let's put in four of each. So with the regular, with the 75 millimeter gun, what I'd like to do is get up a good stock of HCBI, carry about 30 AP rounds plus four in the ready rack. And then I like to carry a lot of HE rounds. I go up to approximately my max and then I throw in 20 more because I know odds are I'm going to be using up HE rounds at the beginning of the game. So 20 more. Just beware that if you're carrying above your maximum uh, ammo storage and you do get hit, it's much more likely that the hit will be catastrophically bad because all of that extra ammo sitting around in close proximity to the crewman is not good for their health. When the ammo is set up the way you like, hit enter to close the menu. You can t take a final look at your tank to make sure everything is good. You can change the hatch st uh, status at this point if you like. Um, if everything is set up to your liking, hit escape and the day begins. Every time you start uh, one of the three basic mission types, it will give you um, a outline of what you're supposed to do. Advance and battle missions are very similar. You move around the map ca capturing territories. The only difference with a battle mission is that the resistance and um, is much like more likely to be higher. You're attacking a much more fortified position as opposed to advance where you might, um, it's much more likely that you'll catch the enemy unawares. Finally, you take a random amount of time at the beginning of the day to actually reach this, your start area. So we've already lost five hours of daylight and 16 HE rounds just to get to the start of the map. Press enter to continue and we find ourselves on the campaign day map. First action that we can do is check an adjacent area to see what the enemy resistance level is like. I'm gonna check the town. It says there's light enemy resistance and I'm gonna hit enter to, uh, to continue. Now, more than likely what's gonna happen right now is there's gonna be a random campaign event. So let's see what happens. And all right, so this has been added in uh, beta 2.0. From time to time on the campaign day map, on this map here, you're going to receive radio transmissions from HQ that will inform you of changes that have happened out of, outside of your control or might send you an optional mission or a quest uh, to continue. That's, sorry, to complete. So in this case, um, HQ is asking us to head to the highlighted map location and capture it from enemy forces. If we do capture it, we'll receive a bonus of 10 VP on top of the victory points that we earn for destroying units and capturing the area itself. So the capture area is way up at the top of the map. If we want to take another look at that, we can use the W and S keys or the arrow keys to take a look. And here on our map, it's, map, it's marked as capture. So on my way to the exit area, if I have enough time and I can actually capture this area, as you can see, we're gonna get uh, a VP bonus of uh, 10 victory points, which isn't too shabby. So this is uh, where we uh, continue and the day, the day begins by uh, checking adjacent areas, moving around. In this case, we happen to be right next to marshland, 
uh, which is impassable. We can't enter it even if we wanted to. Um, from here, we only have two areas that we can choose to go to. What I'm actually going to do is to save some time, I'm going to try to check the resistance in this woods area because even though woods are quite hazardous, it would cut off a lot of time for me to bypass um, these areas right here and just start heading north um, as fast as possible. So check his adjacent area. Light resistance sounds good. I'm still in the stock M4 and my crew doesn't have a lot of experience, however, so I need all the help I can get. Let's t call in an artillery strike or try to anyway. Success. There it goes. Let's enter into the area. And yes, we will use advancing fire because we're playing it safe. We move in, take a shortcut across the marshland. No resistance in the area. And one of our crewmen pipes up with his with his uh, observations on the situation. Four victory points. And another random event has come up. We've uh, encountered a friendly supply truck. Luckily, we've just started the day. We've got lots of ammo, so we don't need to restock our ammunition. So we'll say no, rather than use up that 15 minutes. So this is where I am. From here, I can continue to check areas. I've got three adjacent areas, of which two would be useful for me to continue to move. Um, once I figured out what the resistance is, I can choose to move into that or take a different path. And this is the way that the, 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 the day progresses. Most of the changes in beta 2.0 are with how the, the, the game begins and with the events on the uh, campaign day map as well. There have been a couple minor changes in the battles, um, but most of the major changes uh, I've already gone over. So I hope you enjoyed this uh, short video to help you get started playing um, beta 2.0 of Armored Commander. As always, if you encounter any bugs or have any suggestions, please email me. It's armoredcommander at gmail.com. And as always, you can download Armored Commander absolutely free from armoredcommander.com. Thanks very much.